All right, look, I love my home studio. I spend a lot of time working on my home studio, but I also spend a ton of time in my home studio. And sometimes you just gotta get away. So we are going to leave the city and head up to Lake Arrowhead for some peace and quiet in the woods. So yes, I need to get away, but this is not going to be a vacation. I want a true music making retreat. And what I think I can do is take on the challenge of making a beat tape in 24 hours. Before we embark on this journey, let me talk to you about the gear I've chosen to help me take on this challenge. First up, I'm not going on a plane so I can bring a bigger keyboard with me. Let's bring the Launch Key 37, which is probably my favorite MIDI keyboard for like a full size one at the moment. Ableton Push 1. Why, Tetra? Why Ableton Push 1? Because I can. And here, the Porta Capture X8. This is going to be a field recorder. It can also work as a USB microphone and an audio interface. So it's like a perfect multi tool to bring in on a trip like this. Whether I want to record some samples, go do some field recording, all that, I can do it here. But maybe we'll want to do some tape sampling. So for that, I'm gonna bring this uh, new or, or new to me, I guess, but it's a micro cassette recorder that you can even change the recording speed and playback speed on. So I think we can have a lot of fun with this. I've also got a few extra tapes. And I recently invested in some new percussion instruments. So I figure to give this beat tape a lively feel, I wanna do some live percussion recorded in. And you might've said, Tetra, where's all that cool hardware you got? Why didn't you bring any of those? Well, that's because for this video, we'll be working exclusively with my new ASUS ProArt Studio Book 16, powered by an AMD Ryzen 7 5825U processor. And I wanna thank AMD for sponsoring today's video. So this laptop is beautiful and all, but I know what you're thinking. Let's get some stickers on this thing. And while we do that, why don't I tell you a little bit about this laptop? I already mentioned the processor, which for me, people ask good laptop for music production. The number one thing you have to look for is the processor, the CPU power. This is an eight core, 16 thread, up to 4.5 gigahertz AMD Ryzen 7 processor. Uh, we've got an NVIDIA RTX 3060 graphics card in this thing with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which is actually double what is required for Ableton Live. So we should have no problem with some hefty, hefty plugins. It's got plenty of great ports. I've loaded this thing with some of the most intensive uh, plugins that I regularly use and I have no doubt that we'll be able to put this thing to the test and we'll see how it performs over the course of the challenge. So let's pack this thing up and get on the road. Okay, so yes, this is the inspiring space I'll be making the beat tape in today, but there are a few pleasant surprises here. Let me give you a quick tour. First off, there's like little hidden instruments all around this place. Got this singing bowl here. Followed by this random kalimba that I found, which is pretty cool. Not quite in tune, but still cool. And I didn't have to bring my own frog. There's a frog here too. Awesome little classical guitar, which sounds really nice and warm. Definitely want to sample this. And yes, you did see a trumpet on the wall. I'm not going to play it because I think somebody actually uses this trumpet and the valves are also a little stuck. Need some oil. All right, so obviously this is a really inspiring spot to be making music in, but there's just one problem. I haven't started making any music yet. So let's get started. And this I think is a pretty nice setup with a great view. All right, time to get started here. I'm gonna just start building the idea for the intro track of the beat tape. So I have this vision to start the beat tape with this, this dreamy intro mood. And one of the first libraries that I haven't really used before from Native Instruments is the Piano Colors Library. But we're going to be putting this laptop right to the test because loading up some of these contact libraries uh, is not an easy task for many CPUs. All right, so, so far, zero CPU issues, even with these three hefty libraries playing. I mean, the Slate and Ash stuff, the auras, is like super intensive. 
plus we've got session guitarist and piano colors. Very hefty stuff, we're having no trouble playing in real time, but I think I know where I want the drums to go, so I'm gonna work on that next. Once I got that drum groove going, I decided to resample everything we just recorded from the intro and then, you know, really fit it into this drum groove. Of course, I brought all these percussion instruments. Let's go ahead and record them to add to that groove. All right, status report. I just got done with the uh, intro track of the beat tape and I'm really glad that it evolved in the way that it did. Topped out at about 33 tracks and I did multiple, multiple layers of contact, especially that session guitar for those guitar layers at the end. I can't wait for you to hear it. So I've got stuff like Archeria's augmented voices. I've got a Juno synth in here, multiple contact. The bad news is that took me maybe three hours. So we really need to get into the next track. All right, to switch gears completely here, let's pick up the little tape recorder and record some acoustic guitar. I figure we could do some tape sampling on this one. Playing it back, we get that lo-fi tape guitar goodness. And we gotta transfer it over to the laptop. Now on top of this, now that I've got the sample on the computer, I want to start building the drums on top. But something happens as I continue to work on it. I'm happy how these drums are turning out, but as I'm working through this process, I'm realizing this isn't the vibe I want to go for for this beat tape. So I abandoned the guitar part and kept the drums. And I think this is important. If something's not working or if you're just not feeling something, abandon it and strip it for parts. We've got the drum part, let's move on. Let's add something new. Finally, I found this blank forms sound from the Spitfire audio library that he did. It just fits perfectly with these drums. But I wouldn't have gotten to this drum groove had I not started with the tape guitar sample that we used in the first place, even though it got thrown away. So it's important. This melody is from Archeria's Mellotron. When building these tracks, one thing I'm paying special attention to is early in the creative stage, building some type of B section, not just staying on one loop for too long, but using all the instruments to create a new section. Alright, so here's the problem. I've been working on the second track, but if you notice as I've been working on it, the weather has significantly changed and the clouds are quite ominous. But I literally just went to pick up my phone and they just issued a winter storm warning. Now a reminder that I am in California here, so I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to stay here tonight and I might have to leave early, which totally impacts how much I'm going to be able to get done. I'm going to power through it if we have to take this show on the road potentially finish this at home, I think we'll do that. But the challenge is still on. Since we didn't actually use the guitar before, I really wanted to make sure it was incorporated in some way, so I just went back to sample it a little bit more. All right, I must come to the reality that I do not have much time left here if I want to get out before this giant storm. So I do not think that it is likely that I can finish an entire beat tape wall here in the next few hours. But what I would like to do is at least have four major ideas by the time I leave here. And then we'll head back and wherever I end up tonight, whether that's off a cliff or in a snowbank or maybe back at the Lo-Fi Lounge, we'll put the finishing touches on, complete some arrangement, do a little more uh, bells and whistles, that sort of thing. Let's just hope I make it out alive.
with no time to spare here getting right into the third track and since the first two tracks have been relatively high energy i wanted to do something a little slower a little more melancholic for this third track every good album or mixtape or whatever has a good ballad right the sound here is from spitfire audios uh, or labs actually tape cassette piano Since I'm thinking of this beat tape as one cohesive work, I'm using a lot of similar elements between songs and I keep going back to this electric guitar sound uh, from the Native Instruments library. It just sounds great. When I get into this flow of working on music, it's really important that I can just continue to add layers and keep playing over what I've already created and as you do that some machines struggle but the studio book is doing a fantastic job as I add more layers I'm having no performance issues I'm able to play in real time it's really important for my workflow I wonder if part of me creating this sad vibe was me dealing with the fact that I would have to leave this beautiful place early. that note of not having much time I wrapped up the process of mostly finishing this track up but then started working on the fourth track and getting most of the ideas done for that one ah okay as you can probably see the evening is upon us so it's gotten quite dark and the wind has not died down one bit that storm is coming in but before we leave this cabin sanctuary in the woods I wanted to just play you all a snippet of each of the tunes because I've got all four now I just worked on beat number four off camera and they're nowhere near finished I got to mix and do some arrangement work on some of them but I just want to give you a little taste of the feel of this beat tape before we head back to the lo-fi lounge and put it all together here's the opening beat the first one we worked on today Alright, and I wanted to follow that one up with boom, a solid hit of energy. So here's beat number two. Alright, and after that, time to slow things down. I went into this wanting to do a beat in 3-4. Finally, here's the ending. This one I'll have to do the most fleshing out of, but I wanted to do some callbacks to the first track, so I even actually just drag and dropped the first project into this one and pulled some things like the percussion samples and some of the same instrumentation. Uh, and hey, computer doing fine, combining two live sets with a bunch of plugins. Even though it didn't start snowing yet, the drive home was so foggy, it was kind of hard to see even the next car in front of you. And you can see it's just a windy road with the icy signs all over the place, but I'm glad I left early. Here's what it looked like the next day. I would not have wanted to go 13 miles down the mountain on those windy roads in this weather. All right, so it is now Sunday afternoon. 
my hopes of getting a beat tape done in just one day are gone, but this is not a total loss. I think within the encapsulation of this weekend, this beat tape will be complete. Since I basically have all the musical material done that you've already heard, the last work that needs to be done is polishing these arrangements, doing a bit of mixing, and just finalizing this thing. It's not gonna be perfect, but hey, it will be a beat tape in a weekend. And listen, even though we're back home, that doesn't mean I'm gonna jump onto all the gear that I have here. I'm gonna hold myself to the same limitations. And basically, since I'm just mixing and arranging now, it's just gonna be me, my pro art studio book, and we're gonna get to work. You know, maybe if I sit in the kitchen, it will still feel like I'm away. I'm, I'm physically away from the studio, right? That's my thinking here. So after I finish all the mixing and arrangement work, I'm finished, right? Upload them to Google Drive and we're done, right? No, we need to now listen to those mixes, take some notes and figure out what we actually need to fix. Do another round of mixing. All right, all right, it is done. You're listening to some of it right now. Is it perfect? No, but it is indeed done and that's sort of the point. And I think even though we did have to leave the Airbnb, if I calculated all the time that I spent working on this from making the musical ideas to doing the mixing, it was probably less than 24 total hours. And I highly encourage others out there to take on a similar challenge. And it also makes me think, what could I do if I had 48 hours? What could I do if I had one week or the luxury of one month to go be isolated uh, and just focus on making music? That's what happens when you take on these little challenges, you kind of start to understand what you're actually capable of. And I'm proud of this music. Channel members, you can listen to the whole beat tape right now on the channel. Check the community tab for that. Everybody else, check the link in the description so you can listen to it. And once again, I want to thank AMD for sponsoring today's video. Uh, this Asus Pro Art Studio book powered this entire process. The whole thing was made from start to finish on this. If you need a powerful laptop for music production, or if you're a creator and you work in visual art, and even if you do a little gaming on the side like me, this is a great option for you. Link is in the description about the sponsor info. Support the sponsor, support the channel. I hope you enjoyed this slightly chaotic video and that's going to be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.